The cards in one stack form the centerpiece of each Yu-Gi-Oh! player's collection. But what about the bulk left in boxes as well as tins without a real place and or purpose? And what if I built a deck with only those cards? I'll try to build a deck out of whatever bulk I can find and try to improve it from episode to episode based on the experiences I had dueling with it online or with potential upgrades I will have to earn. Get ready to sleeve up those late Megaton comments or structure deck leftovers. Because this is bulk only Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, this went surprisingly well. The deck last week performed pretty well, honestly, for being based on a 2004 era strategy. But with that out of the way, hello and welcome everyone. It is me, Zalava, also known as How to Do This, back for you with, I guess, the second episode of bulk only Yu-Gi-Oh! Um... Last week we built a kind of, yeah, Apprentice Magician deck, which uh, did net us a total of two game wins in the following uh, games that we played on Adobe Pro. But uh, this week I think we will have to look for something a bit more powerful and something with a lot more speed. And when I say the word speed, I think the people that paid close attention to the intro will definitely know what I'm talking about because uh, we are going back into the bulk and picking out a new strategy to kind of base um, our deck around um, so that, you know, we can maybe get a few more wins in. Um, with those two wins, as uh, mentioned in the intro, um, I want to kind of have an incentive to win those games to, you know, maybe um, be able to improve the deck further. I do have staple binders with, you know, play sets of staples um, that... Uh, I will be, you know, using for the uh, purposes of this series. Um, so with that out of the way, while I pick out what we'll probably be working on this week, um, <clears throat> this is where you guys come in. Um, you guys can leave in the comments maybe ideas for like potential rewards because I don't want like the rewards for game wins to be just, you know, wild cards. Um, where I can pick, like, whatever card from the binder that, you know, I like. Um, and just casually pick that up and be like, yep, this uh, now is my reward for winning. Um, so that, you know, maybe there's a bit of balance in there and I don't completely, you know, tune the deck into overdrive in, like, two weeks with, like, some six staples. Put into the comments some ideas for, like, maybe simple staple cards like uh, Mystical Space Typhoon or something along those lines. Um, that, you know, you can realistically have lying around um, that you guys would like to give me as kind of rewards for uh, doing, you know, well in this series. Um, because I think that would, you know, of course, create a very good environment to uh, still try and win games, which is, uh, in the end, uh, the most important part here. Um, seeing what, you know, we can do with a bulk deck and... Uh, see how far we can take that because um you know that's that's the point of it you know <laughs> but yeah this would be a good example of like what i was kind of alluding to i have like in you know these sleeves i have like some engines or deck cores as you can see there's like a decent portion of like pk stuff in here um so like if you you know would like to see some of those deck cores um i do have an couple ideas for like maybe one or two of those um already um i went through the stack already um so if you like you know if you're saying hey you know if you have one of those that cause use it honestly i'm i'm thinking about like picking out these speed troopers i think i honestly do that also this expendable die is kind of kind of cool i'll maybe consider that if we like pick up warriors at some point i'm here for this guy and also, if I'm already here, I can probably pick out the other Gizmax as well. So, yeah. I think, you know, I've not, like, talked a whole lot about what we will be building this week. Um, but I think with, you know, the initial picking out of, like, a lot of the Speedroid cards from the uh, Synchro Storm set, um, I think it is very easy to, you know, uh, tell what I'll be uh, working towards this week in terms of, you know, the deck that we're building. This is like another kind of like core, you could say, because here's uh, three copies of BF BF Zelos, um, three big core Mark III and three Blaster Cannon core. 
um just stuff like this you know if you if you want to hand me like one of these um for like an episode maybe i think we could definitely say you know the the course only work for an episode um, because i think you know mainly we will be focusing on maybe getting to like uh, a decent state with like not only the speedroid deck but maybe you know I'd, I'd like to honestly revisit the um the the kind of spellcaster strategy we we tried going for last week um at some point because i think the mention chondra and magical dimension did form like a pretty pretty sick um kind of you know just a removal loop you know because uh, you got to mulligan your mulligan your hand a bit where were these guys last week? Yeah, we're definitely revisiting revisiting spellcasters at one point. So uh, Tragodia, maybe maybe we'll throw a Tragodia in there for for old times' sake. That's the the I guess the bulk only thing you could say. Ignore the like r rest of the like crystal B structure deck I opened uh, a couple weeks ago. But this is like a lot of the stuff we uh, picked out last week as well. But we didn't end up uh, playing like the uh, you know supply squads, the fishers, the night beams. Then of your shells and all this good stuff that we like picked out but it didn't find its way into the deck that we played last week um so this will probably also go in here um to like you know have that at the side if we like you know record another bulk only episode um so i don't need to like look for like a decent piece of you know staple bulk uh every week um also, if you haven't watched the first episode, check it out. Definitely. Check check the first episode out. And uh, yeah, because it was a lot of fun to put together. And I honestly can't thank you guys enough for the support on that one. I got a lot of nice comments, you know, saying that uh, it either inspired you guys to like look into maybe a bulk only format as well. Or, you know, of course... Um, people saying that it uh, looks like uh, looks like fun because it was a lot of fun. Uh, oh, <laughs> your band, bro! <laughs> um, because it was a lot of fun to put this together to you know um, see what you know we can do with whatever we find, and uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. So uh, and honestly, just huge thank you to you guys. Um, means a lot that uh, the the episode was so well received. Uh, compared to like other stuff I uh, did in the past. Um, so I don't suppose there is much left to look into, which means uh, I will sort this through, sit my ass down and not tip the camera. Um, but yeah, I'll sift through this, sort it out and reconnect with you guys once I have a deck ready and then we'll see what happens and with that we have reached the deck overview for the speedroid deck that we will be taking into this episode of the bulk only journey starting off with one terra top incredibly powerful card still limited to this day which we will have to deal with um but i think it does not really hurt that much a three tech a great card a special summonable body that can tag out into a tuner Three Marvel Machine, a good normal summon that adds us a speedroid from the deck to the hand, which is very lovely, of course. Three card turbo, a special summonable tuner is always nice, so that is neat. Also has a kind of boosting effect for wind monsters while it's in the graveyard. I'm playing two red eye dice, a level one tuner that we can summon, and if it is summoned, it modulates the level of another speedroid to facilitate some easier synchro plays. Two Daiko Duke, another tuner. Also banishable from the graveyard to special a tuner from hand or graveyard, which is nice. Some level 4 normal summon, two hostels, specials another speed rod from the hand, and also has a foolish effect while it's in the grave. And a double yo-yo to grab back stuff from the graveyards. Uh, two Gizmek, Naganaki, to grab red eye dice, um, which does help with the uh, speed lift that we are playing. A Gizmek Inaba, some speed rods do fit the kind of Gizmek stat line, so that is nice. Also a wind, so it works under the wind lock a genex ally Bartman for another tuner playing the one tragodia just to see how it works the one leaf place plays for the recurrable body the smoke mosquito because you know we want to stay alive and the wear afters help us search this still playing one for one foolish burial instant fusion as our powerful one of spells that we found um 
three speed recovery. This is either a rebound for a speed droid or on the follow up, this can add us a speed droid back from the graveyard, which is incredibly cool. Um, definitely gives this deck like some form of follow up, which is great. Three speed lift. This special is a speed droid monster from the deck if we only control the tuner monster and no other monsters, which is very nice. Three where after, mostly here to maybe search the smoke mosquito or like additional copies of red eye dice in case we need them. Then we have two duplicate. This is a compulse if we banish a wind and also is able to like summon itself as a kind of token on the follow up, which is lovely. And then still playing the one Asia rune and EM, the one Asia rune still to negate special summons and the EMR to maybe tribute off a kite drake to pop three cards in case that comes up. Uh, on the topic of kite drake. Maxing out on this guy, either a board negate or board wipe, which is rather lovely, and also floats and uh, is able to add us a speed right card if he gets destroyed by an opponent's card. So hopefully this guy puts in work with his 3k body. Still playing the uh, Wind Witch Diamond Bell, which we can still make, uh, the Maple Maiden, the Stardust Assault Warrior, and the High Speed Roid Chant Bora for additional Synchros. Uh, the rest of the extra deck kind of definitely takes a back seat during this episode. Um, as we can't really make these, uh, we can't. We can maybe make this guy, but we're windlocked. Uh, but Tornado Dragon assembled Nightingale. Hopefully, put in some work. And yeah, the rest of the extra deck is the Steel Star Regulator, the one Shinobi Insect, and our Instant Fusion target in the Magic Key Beast. So not a lot of changes there. But I think with that out of the way, we will definitely take this deck, digitalize it and see how it works. And just like that, we have the deck fully digitalized, but I think with that off the way, I'll get into some games and reconnect with you guys with some replays in the interest of time. Well, and with that, we move into the replays. The first one is actually the first game I played with the deck, which I wish I would have recorded because my reaction to seeing normal summon hostels, special red eye dies, I think was priceless. Um, it is of course against speed droids, so our opponent will have a lot of the extenders at uh, his disposal that uh, do not necessarily make our life easier here. Um, goes through basically the entire line, you know, we're making rubber band shooter and using all the fancy extenders that the deck has to offer. Uh, I don't know why he uses the Fukimodoshi Piper there in Grave um, to, you know get himself to uh, get his Hagoida down to uh, level 3 but uh, yeah we make uh, Maple Maiden here through a hand trap which is of course like the most unfair thing about this that uh, our opponent is playing hand traps uh, because that is a luxury we do not have with a bulk only deck um, top decks double yo-yo very good normal summon on a follow up incredibly cool card since I had to like it, it definitely helped me to have read these speed right cards in advance uh, because the last couple of days I was helping a friend who is planning on getting into the game uh, figure out kind of the combo lines of that deck. But yeah, um, we are able to bait out the Cosmic Laser Dragon here. Um, our opponent will go for another rubber band shooter in the second main phase, popping off into a Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, turning that into a Crystal Clear Wing Synchro Dragon. The big bad new boss monster that speedroids have received with a new wave of support. Um, we're going to summon Gears Maginaba here, make Kite Drake, but sadly Kite Drake will find his timely end against Cosmic Blazer. Dragon Kite Drake, by the way, such a cool card, honestly. I think if we maybe find a way to more consistently enable Kite Drake specifically, we will have a better time with this deck than I had in these couple games. But yeah, with that out of the way, I think we will move into the next replay and see what awaits us in that. I think with this card in our opponent's hand, uh, our opponent's deck does not need many introductions. Um, but our hand is looking uh, pretty grim. Uh, you know, speed lift, uh, speed recovery doesn't necessarily get us uh, into many places. I think I definitely could have fired the instant fusion here. Um, but this game was uh, plagued by a lot of misplays. In all honesty, it was plagued by a lot of misplays. Um, definitely still was figuring out, you know, basic speed right stuff, uh, which is why you see me setting and passing here uh, and not getting over this last warrior because I wanted to get this red eye dice into the grave. 
uh, to turn my duplicate life so I can, you know, duplicate, banish the red eye dice on a follow up. Uh, summon the Takatombok here. He will summon his Giz Makarochi from the hand. Uh, I will grab a card shower from the deck, activate a speed lift, summon out a terror top. Sadly, forget the part that speed lift, res uh, speed lift restricts you from activating uh, cards of Hexen when that monster is special summoned. Um, but with uh, duplicate access, I can still make some things happen. Um, make some monsters here, make a Maple Maiden. And uh, I, you know, funnily enough, <coughs> if I summoned that duplicate in attack position, I think I could have gone for game here. But this way, our opponent will just go ahead and uh, summon a 10k Grand Machu and deck us in the face for our entire last bit of life points. Um, yeah, I definitely could have walked with this one. I think that was uh, entirely down to like my mistake because there definitely was like a way to game the opponent here. But uh, it it is what it is, and with that, we will move into the next replay. Almost had to like do a do a check on this one if I wasn't playing against Gong Strong himself. But uh, yeah, we are about to face off against Super Heavy Samurai. Um, that ignore that misclick on the marble machine. Um, that definitely never happened, right? Um, well, you know, making Kite Drake pass, uh, feeling pretty decent about this because Kite Drake uh, is still able to float, and. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not feeling terrible about, you know, going kite track pass, uh, but our opponent is about to absolutely pop off on these super heavy samurais, which do have not only a pretty decent amount of good cards themselves, uh, Soul Piercer being, I think, the main one here to highlight, um, with a link one in your archetype, something that says, if this is sent to graveyard, add a card, uh, is kind of crazy. Not gonna fucking lie. Um, absolutely nutty here. Goes into, you know, goes into Nova, Infinity, plays a small Vernasilf package for additional extension, plays also some Infinitrex for additional extension, uh, triggering the Soul Piercer here, I think, for the 15th time this turn. Um, using the Infinitrex Tunneler to get some more cards into his grip, which of course gives him a whole lot of gas to work with. A Rose Paladin as well to, you know, um, have some like plants in there, I guess. Uh, but yeah, punches me for a good bit of damage at the last attack. We do trigger the Tragodia in our hand. Um, he adds a Queen Angel of Roses, by the way. Impressive how he fits all of that in one deck. Uh, we try to fish for negates here. Um, we get the Infinity out with the Tragodia. We go normal summon Marble Machine, special Takatombok. Takatombok for the Red Eye dies. And I think at this point in time, I realize I don't have a second Chambara, so I will have to make Maple Maiden. But uh, Maple Maiden gets turned into Underworld Goddess. Um, via the uh, IP Mascarena effect. Impressive that he still finds space for a Machina Overdrive, to be honest. I didn't see this card in, in, in the game I played, um, because uh, this is game. <laughs> and with that, we move into the last replay I will have present for you guys here. Uh, if you are seeing the sand, it is looking a little bit troll despair, you know. Uh, Commandant Set 1 Pass is the name of the game here. Uh, we are going to normal summon a Gizmek Naganaki, which brings us into a Red Eye Dice. Summoning a Takatombok from the hand, uh, getting a second Red Eye Dice with that. Using the Red Eye Dice and the Takatombok here to make Maple Maiden into Kite Drake. Triggering the Kite Drake, which will net us a Nibiru. But the Kite Drake will still trigger, blow up the board, and we are able to speed recovery back that Kite Drake onto the field and punch our opponent for a solid 3k. Um... Our opponent will have nothing much to do. Activate a Necro Valley, set a Fossil Diner, which will be incredibly rough, to be honest. Um, especially because Necro Valley turns off our duplicate, um, which is not good. Not not absolutely terrible, to be honest. Uh, we are going to make Chambara here. Um, yeah, and our opponent finds off the top a Raigeki, which of course gets rid of that Chambara rather easily. Um, Normal summoning the one, the only, do 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 inspect the border. Um, finds Ryo off the top. Which is... It's been a hot minute since I've seen Ryo. <laughs> like... <laughs> I think uh, not... Uh, I've, I've not seen Ryo actively in a deck list since, like, what? Um, back in school when I was looking at, like, top deck lists during, like, 5Ds era, by the way. When people were like still active, actively like main or side decking this guy uh, because he's like, you know, kind of decent in, in, you know, those formats. Um, but yeah, with that, we will find ourselves defeated at the hands of Stun. And with that, I think I'll catch you guys in the deck overview for like some final thoughts on this one.
Uh, this one was a rough one, I feel like. Um, I don't know. I really like the speedroid archetype, as I've mentioned in the replays the last couple of days. Uh, I have been like figuring out a bit more about this deck um, in like a constructed sense uh, because a friend is looking to pick that duck uh, up, maybe. Um, it's cool. It feels like it. It feels like Morphtronics in a sense, um, which you know I do appreciate that. Um, but this week we were not able to win out a game, which is a bit sad. Um, but I think that is just something that can happen when we are basically just playing a deck made out of bulk cards. Um, I'm kind of debating if like next week I should be you know looking to upgrade this deck because I do not know what I would fix without, you know, using up some wild cards. But I honestly would, like, prefer to leave the uh, reward bit up to you guys. Um, as mentioned in, you know, the kind of gathering of, you know, what cards we would be playing for this week. Um, do leave, you know, suggestions for, you know, if, you know, you win X amount of, like, X amount of games, you can, you know, redeem a wild card. If you win X amount of games, you can redeem, I don't know, a deco talker or something. Just, uh, you know, simple staples. Um, that would definitely make my life easier, but not too easy right now, because we are looking for some progression and uh, not, you know, turning this deck into Constructed overnight. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like this deck. I think it gets to, you know, its its win conditions in Kite Drake specifically, because Kite Drake is such a sick card, being either a bot wipe or a bot negate on summon, and then still floating... Um, which, you know, that floating is triggered in many ways because it just needs to be sent to your graveyard by your opponent. So you can, you know, battle, card effect destruction can be tributed over everything. It's crazy. I don't know. I think maybe next week we experiment with a bit less trap cards. Um, I think uh, EMR and Angel that you Asia Rune have maybe outlived their welcome. I think Asia Rune was like pretty decent in the Spellcaster deck, but that deck was, you know, a bit more suited towards more trap cards. But I think we will figure that out in the next week. So if you, you know, enjoyed this episode, definitely let me know down below and leave your suggestions for potential game win, win rewards uh, down in the comments. Remember, we still have two wins left from that initial episode with the uh, Spellcaster deck. And next week, I think we will either look to improve this or maybe, you know, look into what we can build. Um, but with all that out of the way, I thank you guys very much for watching and see you guys again next time. But until then, goodbye.